Hey guys, and welcome back to The Strategizer, where we take a look at all things strategy and strategically based. So, this is the next video in my review of all the new Dice Throne, Marvel Dice Throne heroes. Today we're going to be taking a look at Loki, and I hope you enjoy. And if you do, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And hit the notification bell so you can know when my videos are coming out. The next review will be on Thor, but we're not talking about my next review. We're talking about this review, which is on Loki, the god of mischief. All right? So let's get him open, and we're going to take a look at him, and I'll tell you my thoughts. So, he is in the green crate that comes with the Kickstarter. I'm not sure if that's in the normal box or a Kickstarter exclusive. But, yes, he is in green for at least the Kickstarter. So, let's get him opened up. Okay, so, first let's take a look at his dice and his status effects. And then I will show you anything else you need to know. Like his abilities. Alright, so... Let's first take a look at Illusion. Stack limit to unique status effect. Attempt to find Loki among his illusions. Begin the game with your three illusion cards set aside. A player with this token may spend it when being attacked. If spent, present the three illusion cards to your opponent, face down in any order. You may suggest which card they should select. The attacker chooses any card. Flip over the chosen card and resolve the text. This token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. Let me just show you our three illusion cards. This is a very good ability. It looks different, so you'll know. It says illusion and has a picture of the status effect. And what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle them up. You're going to look at them. Make sure you know. And then you're going to suggest. So I could be like, you should choose this one. Why not? This is the one you should choose, guys. Come on, choose this one. But I could be lying so that you fail. Or I could be telling the truth so that you succeed. Now, they do different things. You want the fail card to be revealed because you don't fail. Th your attacker does. Loki prevents infinity and coming damage. All of it's blocked. Wow. This is okay, but you'd really prefer the fail. Loki prevents half incoming damage, round it up, and Loki may spend another illusion, which he would just shuffle them back up and try again, where you could, uh, where you could prevent uh, the rest of the incoming damage. The re where you can prevent all of the incoming damage, uh, the rest of the incoming damage, or you could succeed. So, with the success card, you would prevent zero incoming damage, meaning you fail, and the attacker gains bag of tricks, which I will show you in a moment. But Loki may spend another illusion, once again. Okay, so illusion is basically how he mostly works, and it's the best way to avoid things. And a lot of things on his board give him it, but you'll see that in a moment. All right, next is Bag of Tricks. Stack limit two, positive status effect. Roll and gain the surprise. During their upkeep phase, a player with this token removes it and rolls one. Be keep in mind, it doesn't say may remove it. They just remove it. On one, lose one CP. Not good for anyone. On two to five, Loki chooses whether the player heals two, gains one CP, or receives two damage. So, when you receive those bags of trips, you have a five, six chance of getting something bad. Either losing a CP or taking two damage. However... Uh, Loki will get to get the 1 CP or heal 2. And then if you roll 6, you gain 2 CP. So Loki is basically a 5-6 chance of being successful with the bag of tricks, while opponents have a 1-6 chance of being successful in any way. Spellbound, stack limit 3. Unique status effect. An offensive ability cannot be rolled. When inflicted, place this token so that covers the name of an opponent's offensive ability. As in the name. Right there. Um... A player with this token may not activate the offensive ability that is covered by this token. A player who only has one offensive ability uncovered cannot be afflicted with this token. Now, that's impossible. There, you're going to at least have, in, in all possibilities, you can only have one passive ability and two defensive abilities, meaning you'll have five offensive abilities otherwise, and you'll still have two open. That's more for Dice Storm Adventures, so he doesn't become the OP of fighting those minions in Dice Run Adventures. And it's removed right after the offensive phase is done. And keep in mind, no passive abilities or defensive abilities may be covered. And also, uh, you can't cover an ultimate. Um, so it cannot be transferred anyway, but can be removed. So keep in mind about his unique stats effects. They're only for Loki or only against opponents, but they will be able to be removed. Okay. He has a scepter on one and two for his dice. 
one third chance of rolling a scepter on one and two. Illusion, three and four. It's a little helmet, and it's illusion. It's on three and four. One third chance. Another character then with one six chance for five and six. Lies for five with that like orange swirly thing and mischief for like a nice a, a spike or maybe an L. I'm not exactly sure what that is because if you look at it like this, it's like an L. Um, also one six chance, which will get you your ultimates and stuff. Okay, so those are his stats, effects, and dice. Let me show you his board now. So, let's start with his basic ability that most characters have with the three of their most um, common. Mockery. And it's for scepters. One third chance to get each scepter. One and two. So, with three, you can deal six defendable damage. With four, you can deal seven defendable damage. And with five, you can deal eight defendable damage. Great to fall back on if you just couldn't do anything. Next is Antics. You need two lies, one six chance for each. You draw one, gain illusion. Like I said, there's a lot that let him gain illusion. And gain a bag of tricks. Like I said, five, six chance that rounds up good for Loki. Confuddle. So, this requires two scepters and two illusions, both with a one-third chance of getting. You inflict two spellbound and deal seven defendable damage. That's really good. From the game I played with Loki, I found that that could hurt you the most another opponent, especially when they need their abilities to do things. Like, in that Doctor Strange game, in a Doctor Strange game I played, where I he was stopping me from casting spells, Loki. Because I was Doctor Strange. My opponent was playing Loki, and... He's pretty OP with those um, spellbounds. All right, Vilify needs one of each. One third chance for two of them, one six for the others. So if any of your opponents, this is for multiplayer games, have more health, then you gain Illusion, Illusion, and deal seven defendable damage. So that is if you are losing. Otherwise, meaning in a tie or you are winning, in all cases, deal five undefendable damage and choose two players to gain Bag of Tricks. May choose the same player twice, or may put it on opponents because one six chance of success, while the rest will be bad. Vex is next. It's a small straight. Gain bag of tricks. Deal seven de defendable damage. Pretty good overall. It's just a nice thing to fall back on if you don't have much. Kneel to me. Large straight. You deal eight damage and roll three dice. Add one damage per scepter. Then on illusion, you gain the bag of tricks. On lies, draw a card. And on Mischief, you gain Illusion. Another way to get Illusion. Remember, these have purrs and ons. So if you get multiple scepters, you will be adding multiple damage because of the time symbol. But the rest are on. So if you somehow roll three Mischiefs, you get one Illusion. Even though the stack limit's already two. Alright, then there is Double Take. This is your penultimate, subultimate, whatever you want to call it. You gain one six chance for each thing. It's Mischief, obviously, at the top. You gain Illusion. Inflict two spellbound and then deal seven undefendable damage. That's very strong. All right, tip the scale. It's a, your defensive ability. You roll one dice, and whatever you get, you get. So on separate, inflict spellbound. On illusion, gain bag of tricks. On lies, draw one card, and on mischief, gain illusion. Another way to get illusion on your defensive ability. Pretty good. By the way, his phrase is I forgot to say this earlier. This isn't mischief. This is mayhem. Just watch. Hmm, that's actually pretty ominous. All right. Glorious purpose. Ooh la la. <laughs> Alright, so this is your ultimate. Five mischiefs, one six chance for each. You gain illusion. Like, if the ultimate couldn't be more powerful, you get illusion with it. Inflict three spellbound, and then choose four players to gain bag of tricks. May choose the same player multiple times. So, this obviously will force you to give it to multiple players, because um, the stack limits too. So it's pretty helpful if you're playing in just a two-player game because you give your opponents two your opponent two bad things and give yourself two good things. But there is more options in multiplayer games. All right, then you would deal ten de de defend undefendable damage, which is a pretty low number for an ultimate. But you gotta look at the rest of the stuff he does, and honestly, that kind of seems a bit too high. So that is Loki's abilities. Let me talk about some design choices, and I'll highlight some cards, and I'll tell you my thoughts. Alright, his combat point style is him with, like, I'm not sure, I think that's, like, a gem, or maybe he's doing anything magic next to him. He's looking all ominous, like he's hiding in a shadow or something. Then there's his health, where he's dodging out of the way, makes sense for health. He's holding a scepter. So it's not like, though, the scepter that we see in the original Avengers movie. It's, like, more wooden, more, like, Asgardian-themed. Um, dice, if you saw my Doctor Strange review... You know that the Kickstarter dice are going to be, like, all specially themed and styled with, like, the waves in them, which looks very good for Loki as well. Um, 
So yeah, that's awesome. And I just want to show you Spellbound because I don't know if you know this, but it's like long. Like it's not shaped like a normal status effect as a unique. Like this is the most unique, unique status effect. Like Illusion looks a little different, but like it still is like kind of status effect. This really looks different. Just wanted to point that out. It's a little design choice that he made. All right. So this is his deck. Pretty normal. Let's first go over his promo card. It works the same as all promo cards. Zero CP, main phase card, roll one dice. On mischief, gain illusion, and inflict three spell on. Wow, I haven't read that yet. That's actually incredibly good. And inflict three spell on a chosen opponent. A chosen opponent. So doesn't it you can't split that up. On any other outcome, draw one. Works the same as most promo cards. Get your six, you get some good stuff. If you saw my review on Doctor Strange, you saw that he did not have ability upgrades. That is not all Marvel Dice Throne characters. We have plenty of ability upgrades. These are just a few. They add abilities, more strong, and they just do more. Like, more damage here. You um, will automatically inflict Spellbound now with um, that. And if you would like to compare it, here you go. At the top, there's nothing about Spellbound. And right here, Spellbound. Uh, I'll just show you the other cards that I brought out, if you want to take a look at them. Just better versions and extra moves. Uh, okay, another design thing I'd like to show you is the back. We're in the Golden City, Asgard. It's very pretty, it's a nice background, but it kind of clashes with the green a lot. Like, it just doesn't look like it fits, really, the Loki style that's going on here. Uh, I, yeah, definitely not. Like, this kind of looks like a mountain range when you block it off, but... So, Golden City looks nice, but it just clashes with Loki, so I don't really like it, honestly, the design there. Um, and so, one more thing I'd like to show you is another one of Loki's cards I would like to, um, show you. Um, sorry, I am just looking for it. Um, okay, here it is. Just to show you, there are plenty of Loki cards that will let you just do a ton of um, status effects like this and flip three spellbound for one CP on your main phase. Uh, this is also a fun card with Loki, zero CP. It is a, um, it is a urgent, not urgent, anytime card. A uh, chosen player must remove a bag of tricks, once again must, and roll one dice. On the five, Loki chooses whether the player heals three, gains three CP, or receives three damage, so it's just strong... And then on 6, they gain 4 CP. So it's just a stronger bag of tricks for any player. So that is Loki, the god of mischief. Very mischievous with those illusions. It can ruin games. But the Loki is a really fun character. And he's really OP and strong. The problem is bad luck destroys him. In that game of Doctor Strange vs. Loki, I was playing... Loki was easily beating me for a while. I got a little bit of good luck, and Loki got a little bit of bad luck. And that's just a problem with him, because that made him lose. My opponent got Illusion probably, like, six times. They only were able to use it once, and they failed. They actually, I got the fail, so that really didn't, I got the success, I mean. So they failed, I succeeded. But, like, bad luck will destroy Loki. He is OP if he can be, but if he can't, it's over. I'd say Loki's a very fun character, right? And he's pretty risky because just it's honestly luck of the, um, luck of the draw, luck of the roll. And if you just don't have it, it's not going to be your game. But if you do, you will destroy your opponent. If you like risky characters or fun characters, definitely get him. Because either way, if you don't really care about winning so, so much, then he's just an amazingly fun character with the mischief he does. A great character, super enjoyable. He's in the big box with Thor, Scarlet Witch, and Spider-Man Miles Morales. So you got a lot of bang for your buck there. Multiple characters, so you don't have to go searching. It's just a big box, so I would recommend him. He gets my seal of approval. Uh, complexity level 4, Loki. I'd agree with that. Pretty complex, but he is very fun, and I'm just gonna have to recommend him to you. Thank you for tuning in to The Strategizer. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Look out for the next review on Thor, the God of Thunder, and, um, stay tuned for more. Bye!